All right, let's look at another system of linear equations and let's use Gaussian elimination and back substitution to try to solve for the unknown variables x1, x2, and x3. So remember, we can use elementary row operations to manipulate this system into an equivalent system of linear equations, hopefully in row echelon form. So if we look at equation one, we actually already have a leading one coefficient here. So there's not much we can do with equation one. But for equation two, we have this 8x1 term here, right? We want to try to get all the terms below leading one coefficient terms to be zero. So this one should be zero and this one should be zero. So if I took row two or equation two and I added negative four times r3 or equation three, that should give us a new r2, right? So what I'm saying is, R2 or equation two is eight X one minus two X three is equal to seven. And if I took equation three and I multiplied it by negative four, I would get negative eight X one plus eight X two minus four X three is equal to negative eight. And then if I added these two equations together, well, I would get zero for this first term a positive 8x2, and then negative 2x3 minus 4x3 is negative 6x3. And that's equal to seven minus eight is negative one. So our now our new equivalent system is x1 minus 3x2 plus 2x3 is equal to one. 8x2 minus 6x3 is equal to negative one. And finally, 2x1 minus 2x2 plus x3 is equal to two. So great, we have a zero term here, right? And the next thing I can do is actually take row two and I can swap it with row three. So if I scroll down here and I rewrite the system, our new equivalent system would be x1 minus 3x2 plus 2x3 is equal to one. 2x1 minus 2x2 plus x over, or x3 is equal to two. And finally, eight x2 minus six x3 is equal to negative one, right? So now this term is not a zero anymore, but now we can actually make this a zero term by taking r2 plus negative two r1, and that gives us our new r2. So R2, which is this equation right here, is 2x1 minus 2x2 plus x3 is equal to two. And then if we multiply R1, which is this equation here, by negative two, we're gonna get negative 2x1 plus 6x2 minus 4x3 is equal to negative two. And if we add these two equations together, we get zero here. Negative two plus six is four x two. And then x three plus negative four x three is negative three x three. And that's equal to, well, two minus two is zero, or two plus negative two is zero. So this is our new R2. Now let me scroll down a bit, make some more room, and we can write our new equivalent system here. So we have x1 minus 3x2 plus 2x3 is equal to one. 4x2 minus 3x3 is equal to zero, right? That was this new equation here. And our third equation was 8x2 minus 6x3 is equal to negative one. So now what I wanna to try to do is I wanna to try to get this to be zero. So I can actually take R3 and I can add to it negative two times equation two, and that should give us a new equation three. And the reason we're multiplying by negative two is so that this term right here would be negative eight X two. And when we added these two terms together, we would get zero for the second column on equation three here. So R3 is eight X two minus six X three 
is equal to negative one. And negative two times r2 would give us negative eight x2 plus six x3 is equal to zero. So when I add these two equations together, this is zero plus negative six x3 plus six x3, this is zero, and then negative one plus zero is negative one. So we're left with zero equals negative one. Uh-oh. Well, if we scroll down and we try to write this equivalent system, we have x1 minus 3x2 plus 2x3 is equal to one. 4x2 minus 3x3 is equal to zero. And we have zero equals negative one. Well, this is interesting because I'm pretty sure zero does not equal negative one. So this is a false statement, right? It's a false equation, it doesn't work. Zero does not equal negative one. So therefore, since we have a false equation here, this implies that this system of linear equations has no solution, right? And since this system has no solution, we call it an inconsistent system. Inconsistent system. So no solution means no solution set. More so since all these equivalent systems that we, or quote unquote equivalent systems that we came up with should in fact be equivalent to the original system. And since this has no solution set, this system that we found here, then that means all of these other equivalent systems do not have a solution set either. So you would not be able to find an x1, x2, and x3 values that would satisfy any of these systems. And finally, if you graphed the original system, the three planes would not intersect at a common point. So that's another way to verify that this system has no solution. In fact, if you graph any one of these equivalent systems, none of the three planes would intersect at one common point.